Hey guys, welcome back. It's good to see you. Thanks for joining us today. If you've been a longtime subscriber, thank you so much for all the support over the years. And if you're new to glass blowing, I'm Dustin. This is Kevin. What's up? Welcome and to the On the Torch. <laughs> we hope you stick around and, you know, we always make all kinds of cool projects. Yep, cool, cool. This week, we switched it up again, went for a goblet, a little sculptural goblet. Pretty sweet. Yeah, it's fun. It's, you know, we took some classical techniques, some sculpture stuff, and I think what I was trying to kind of show in this video is the component aspect of glass blowing that, you know, you build a mm -hmm. lot of different pieces, put them together, and then you end up with like a bigger piece. And, totally. You know, that's how it works. Take different techniques you know, and yep. boom, before you know it, you got a heady. Cool. So yeah, it's a goblet. Um, a lot of my friends have asked why there's a little cup on the side. <laughs> and I, I've been telling them that um, it's so that you can have a glass of wine with your cat and then you can each have a little bit of wine. <laughs> anyway, for those of you guys that have been part of the online school, thank you so much. It's been really fun. It's been cool. Every Monday night at 7 Pacific time, we have a, a call with all the, the students who are paying 49 a month and we all have this call. and go over the demo and ask questions. And then for those of you guys that are on a budget, it's only $9 a month to see all the videos. There's there's at least 120 videos up there of different projects. Um, so yeah, thank you for all the guys who've signed up. And if you'd like to sign up, there's a link right on the bottom. It's, it's really been a pleasure for me to work with you guys um, in this way where I can be available to you guys all over the world. Totally, totally. And it's great, you know, seeing glass blowers from all over the world come into the workshops as yeah. well. We'll be in there live and we got one coming up on January 9th with uh, right. Alderson Glass. That's going to be sweet. He is so good. Um, like Filicello's super tight stringer work, drawing stuff. Um, it's it's a technique that like looks, it's it's an advanced technique. There's a lot to it, but it's, it's actually small. You could do it on a smaller mm -hmm. torch. With practice, I've seen people get really good pretty fast at this stuff. So that's on January 9th. You get to spend all day with him and Kevin and I and totally. four camera angles. It's, it's live a lot of chat, fun. you yeah. know, asking questions, whatever you guys would like to know and he'll be there to answer. Cool. Um, some of you guys email me about my work and uh, where to get it. And so my website's dustinrevere.com and any available work would be there. And um, also any links to anything else that's happening. So uh, you can check that out. And like, I think that I'm going to put this Sherlock up there. Uh, this week, probably nice. maybe I'll put it up there Friday, the same day the video comes out. And oh, um, there you go, very cool. I made it for the online school. Oh, a nice little demo. I like it. Yeah, pink and green, nice little good little Shirley. Like sparkly green. Anyway, and definitely follow uh, Dustin's Instagram. You know, you'll probably post up there when you're oh, going to yeah. drop stuff online. New videos, finished work, workshops, stuff like that. Totally. Wanted to thank our sponsor, Mountain Glass Arts. As always, they are an awesome spot to get your color, your tools. Your torch, if you're just starting out, you know, they have starter kits with everything you need and good to go. Yeah, I mean, that's, it's true. Like they have everything that you're gonna need and more. And it's just like crazy land of glass supplies. But, but what you really need when you're starting out is customer service. And that's what Mountain Glass excels. Like totally. for me, like you get some broken glass comes in the mail, it's fixed. You know, you need help picking out a product. You don't understand what different things are for. They're just gonna talk you through it and they're really good with the community. So that's what, what I think you really get from Mountain Glass Arts. Absolutely. Selection and uh, service to stand behind it. Yeah. Thanks again to Mountain Glass Arts. Cool. Um, let's do it. Should we hop in the studio? Let's get in the studio, make this goblet. We'll see you guys in there. Sweet. All right. So we got into the studio. It took a little while to get here from the backyard because you can clearly see it got dark in between the time we walked from the backyard to the studio long journey you know you got to gather all the tools and equipment you know make, make a wagon sand. covered wagon yeah. you know yeah, so anyway <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna start off by um making some marias in a serendipity rod and this is amber purple over white it's a very classic color combination and you can see when you get it, you know, from the store Mountain Glass Arts, you get it, uh, it looks white on the outside. But as you work it, you can see the color start to come out there. Yeah, it, and it has a different texture and look than a regular white rod too. It's more glossy and you can sometimes see the amber purple over it a little bit. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. it's, if you look at the end of it, you'll see white on the center and then amber purple on the outside. Totally. And you're just going to work your way all the way down this rod here, making Maria's. Yeah, one thing about the serendipity color is that it's super, super soft. Um, it blows out really easily, and for some reason that, that combination is, in my opinion, softer than 
each of them individually. It's interesting how the colors kind of interact like that. Yeah. And they're both already pretty soft colors, I would say. Amber purple, not super soft. Yeah. White is soft. White is pretty soft. Yeah. So you worked as far down the rod as you can here with uh, your little, with your right hand there. And now you'll punty up to finish off. Yeah. This is actually an exercise that I um, start teaching for absolute beginners is just these rods of Maria's. So if you're just starting off, um, making Maria's like this on a rod is super, super good practice. And just keeping them all the same size, keeping them nice and centered, and keeping your whole rod on the same axis, you know, yep. it really practices those fundamentals. Exactly. You can just kind of see that amber purple coming in there as I heat it up and it's starting to strike a little bit when it heats up and you see those yellows and the whites will turn more purple and yellows and stuff. So now you're at the end of this rod where you have your punty. You'll just finish off with uh, one more here. And now you still have some of the color rod in your left hand. So you're going to put Maria's on there too. Might as well use the whole thing. Yeah, especially on this expensive colored glass, the the wonder rods. I think that's what North Star, um initially labeled them as, is the <laughs> Alien Tech and Serendipity were the first two. I don't know if you remember that, but uh, Alien Tech was... Um, Oh, it's, it's like a, green and black kind of right yeah it's like um something over um uh disco sparkle or, mm. or one of those i always ones. just remember that one would crack all the time so cracky just like any alien, any tech. alien tech piece i've ever seen was cracked yeah. quite likely yeah it was a cool color um <laughs> and then they also had the candy apple red and the electric blue mm. and those were also similar to the um alien tech it was uh, like that sparkle disco sparkle oh, okay. or whatever with uh cobalt blue or ruby red basically mm, i don't the, know if i've ever seen those those were nice so that sounds pretty cool i mean yeah. you could kind of recreate it with like a a, a sleeve a, or a sleeve of you know cobalt yeah. over uh yeah something sparkly these or days. even got just some lines. good sparkle colors that's true yeah. just stripe it on but it does have that compatibility stuff when you're putting colors like that um it can definitely have repercussions of compatibility totally so now you uh, are working for we're trying to figure out what color you want to use for your leaves here you're going to do some sculptural leaves to go on here oh yeah i was i was messing around with some old color like rods that i had these are um north star exotic blue and exotic green or exotic red something like that mm -hmm. there's like these three colors the North Star Exotics, they're super old. They, they were there at the beginning too, like really early on. Super silvery. Super, super silvery. You know, they always had like weird compatibility stuff back mm -hmm. then too. Um, but yeah, I was like, man, these are kind of cool rods. Maybe I'll, I'll use them for the leaves because, you know, by themselves, not no compatibility stuff. Right, small connection point. Yeah, we'll get um, different cool colorations out of it. So that was one option. And you're going to go back to your color room here and get a second option the uh is this the green maybe or the red it might be the red exotic that hmm. we ended up with okay i don't know it was one of those three totally um and, and can... it's not the blue because the blue was the first one right right yeah. and you can even see the silver coming off the rod there in the flame that little yeah. green tinge to the flame yeah next time we'll show you the color maybe where we get the color rods from and we can show mm -hmm. you like how i organize the color we'll have to clean it up a little bit first a little dust dust yeah so give it a give it a mash there with the masher. You're using one with some lines that are in the paddle to give a little more texture to it. Yep, exactly. And now you just heat it up there. Make sure to get a nice even heat on it, and you'll stretch it out with your tweezers. Yeah, th this gets pretty thin, and um, as it stretches out, I want to try to keep the heat tapered so it'll it'll make the shape of a leaf, like the taper of a leaf. Totally, totally. Pull as it starts to cool. And now you're comparing that, that you know, the red there and the, the blue. See those lines of red in it, too? I, I could see why they yeah. called it that. Totally. Yeah. Almost like strikes out or yeah. something. Yeah. And, and it, the blue is from the silver. Mm -hmm. and, and the red is probably from the copper. Super cool color. Yeah. And so now you're just going to take that off of the rod there on a nice little three mil punty. And that'll be ready for a connection. And you're going to make a whole bunch of those. Totally. What, some six or ten of these things? You know, kind of picturing the piece, deciding roughly how many you think you're going to need to go around it. And you probably want to make an extra, you know, just in yeah, case. Yeah, probably like when you're making stuff like this, to have like 15 or 20% extra components. Uh, you never know like how it's really all going to end up. It's it's kind of an organic mm -hmm. build. You know, I, I, I build and I go. Maybe one's a little bit better size. Maybe one's a little bit better shape, you know, or 
because one of them cracks on you and you rather than having to fix it just grab a new one totally and it, and it happens and and you know i think that's one of the things that that we want to show in this piece is is making little components and putting them together and and that's how bigger glass sculptures are made out of borosilicate so uh it's kind of a good practice to make a bunch of little components build a frame and attach them to that you know totally and it's pretty quick to uh prep these up you know sm smoosh it yep. twist it clean it up pop it on a punty and now you've got a whole collection of them cool so now that i have some leaves i have some marias i need a few more things so that i can really fill this piece out so how about some pods some like organic pod mm, things totally i know the i know what you're talking about from your old, older goblets there yep and uh i wasn't familiar with this color either it's a pretty kind of yellowish well, color when it's warm honestly for this one we'd have to ask dan hoffman because <laughs> he left a little bit of scrap uh from his workshop and it's been sitting here and there was a one one or two pieces of tubing of this color it's pretty sweet i it's, really like it. i think it's an um it's an overlay or sleeve mm -hmm. i think it's two colors it definitely has that kind of yeah. depth of color to it and it's yeah. kind of ambery what cool yeah but i don't know something pretty sweet yeah well that's thanks dan, dan. Appreciate it. It's beautiful tubing. So you just made a little bubble here, and you're going to stretch it out from one end to make kind of a tapered, trying to get an organic looking shape. Yeah, I don't know. I like to think of these things as like pods or like, and when I was originally using them, I would have like other components of the goblet kind of growing out of it. So like if I had a cup, I'd like on this goblet, I had a small mm -hmm. cup coming out of like around where the pod was. So it looked like maybe the big cup was like an older pod. I don't know. I feel like it, it adds a, a a sense of movement in a way of like time, elapsed time. A bit of a in story a to yeah. the goblet. Yeah, totally. It's uh, so you're just going in there, popped a hole 90 degrees to the axis of your punties there, stretching it open a little with the tweezers and, and just take off your uh, original blow tube. Yeah, I mean, this is just a fun shape, but but feel free to make your your own like imagination of these kind of components. And I think the the thing that I'm doing here is keeping each component fairly simple, right? This is just a bubble. The other thing is a smashed piece of glass. I'm making Maria's. If you think about all these components that I'm I'm using in this piece, they're all very simple by themselves, and it just looks more complicated when when you stick them all together. And each pretty quick to make. You know, that bubble only took you ten minutes, maybe something like that. Yeah, that. if that right, like it's yeah. they're they're quick to make. I mean, you gotta do your prep, but it, all all in all, the component should be quick to make. And if you you can put as much detail as you want in the component, one component could take so long, mm -hmm. like a Marini, for example, or Dan Hoffman's molecules, right. for example. Yeah, right. If he's doing one of those encased, that's gonna take him a big portion of his time. Yeah, and, and I think that's kind of the, the message for you guys who are starting now and intermediate and beginner glass blowers. Um, take your time. You know, take your time on the components. Make sure the component that you're adding is at the same level of the work that you're adding it to. So if you have a messed up foot, make another foot. You know, mm -hmm. if, you, if you have a messed up section, just make another section and set that one aside and or give it to a friend or throw it away or put a bunch of bad ones together you know right you know make it into some crazy other piece right yeah. you know yeah so you uh, made a few of these guys ready to go popping those in the kiln for you have those all up to temp and now you uh, need to make a cup for your goblet why don't we use the same color that we used for the hex cup that was a pretty good color combo and you got a bunch of this really nice crucible tubing so hey yeah perfect for this, this. was like called um uh, electric green maybe was that it uh, it's definitely something green. It was yeah. like, uh, and we were like, hmm, but it turned out it was this also cool striking color. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I bought it and I thought it was like a nice emerald green and it was, um, Surprise. more like, uh, green, amber, purple or something. Mmm, yeah, that's a good description. Totally, yeah. totally. So you're going to pop this guy off. Pretty thick tubing. You ended up doing a little flame cut assist there. And now you have a little section to make a, a little mini cup that you're going to attach to the stem there of the goblet. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I, I cut the tube leaving enough so I can make two little pieces and kind of do that organic time, elapsed time thing we were talking about with this cup here. Mm -hmm. So you now just blew it out into a nice round bubble and you're going to do a flame cut to get a nice cup shape. Yeah, just open it up, flame cut it, blow it, condense it back, and then we'll have another little component we can add onto the piece. Puffing as you blow there and then you'll stick that really thin glass in the flame, melts it right back. 
Yeah, it's gonna, we're going to even it out a little bit. Clean it up there, condense it down a little bit on the lip since it's still really thin there mm -hmm. where you did the flame cut. And boom, another little component. Let it cool there into the kiln it goes. Yeah, I think that the more oxygen I used with this with that green, the more green it came and the less mm -hmm. um, silver showed up. Totally. The, redu the reduction really brings the silver to the surface. Yeah. And you can see the striking that, you know, one, you can see the more yellow part was deeper in the kiln than mm -hmm. the whiter part. So right. The, the, the section you have here was further yeah. back, getting warmer, yeah. getting more to that uh, striking temperature. So now I'm just going to build like a frame out of this stuff. Um, just move it around a little bit and, and heat up in between the Maria's. Just kind of adjust the shape and move it so it looks organic and feels like it has a flow to it and you're just being mindful because you want your final end point to be in line with your base because you want right. your cup to be directly above your goblet foot yeah i mean to a certain degree and then of course there's plenty of goblets with offset cups and feet totally and but yeah for this piece i'm going somewhat some centric you know middle right so you're kind of bending out around you know, rotating kind of off axis with your hand there yeah bringing it back you know like Kevin saying bringing it kind of back to center taking it off center bringing it back to center and now once you have a shape you're happy with you're going to add on the rest of those Maria's <laughs> as little branches almost all right so now I'm just going to look for a nice point to attach these two together and I'm focusing on heating up one side of a Maria and the base of that um, string of Maria's that I, I made earlier and then you're going to go in and flame cut off there roughly in the middle and you'll shape the piece you attached on. Yeah, and, and you can get crazy with this. You can add tons of these and make this really big and, you know, start to to put this in and out of the kiln and, and attach things in the kiln. And um, you can really, I guess this would be the path, a path to build structurally larger pieces in glass. If you're interested in that kind of thing, check out uh, Bandu Dunham. He has done some mm -hmm. really awesome, gigantic kind of lattice work, sculptural pieces. And there's also like the um, Mr. Gray with mm -hmm. the with the masks, um, the the cannabis and leaf, the skateboards and stuff. Tristan with the yep. skate, and yep. then there's that um, molten um, arts classic where they made that that car oh, this year. That was great. Yeah, totally. It was like twenty five pounds or something. That like was that. that was a big unit. Yeah. I can't even imagine moving that thing around. But they put it in and out of the kiln, right? So they would start. They built the frame. Right. They had it on like a plate or a tray add a component all the components are done they're basically the same concept as what we're doing here they built a frame made all the components put the thing in and out of the kiln as they added in components and you can have multiple glass floors working on all the connection points right. for the component they have like 10 glass so it's not yeah. out of the kiln too long right yeah and, you know totally you know, i can't imagine this gets a little stressful near the end though you know i it's like a stress but it's like it's almost like exhilarating mm. right it's like mm -hmm. it's a, it's a high it's like an adrenaline high especially early on when you're when you're blowing glass and you get your piece in the kiln or you're on the last stages where you've spent a couple hours and then it breaks, you know, and there's that, there's that time, but it's almost like a drug. It's like you, you, you do it and you want that feeling more. So you got to push yourself, push it harder, mm -hmm. make more complicated pieces. So you've been bridging these ones up here. You're being mindful to kind of make it so it'll be stable enough to pick up and use as a goblet. Yeah, making some attachments. Um, so these are braced in multiple places. So I attached on the bottom and now I'm putting a little clear section uh, towards the top. So it has another uh, attachment point to make it more stable. Just a little dab of three mil rod and then you'll melt that in. You know, that one was uh, able to get with the links pretty much. But a lot of them you've been using your mini torch to get in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. And you can see even, even this piece is somewhat symmetrical. I have a longer thing in the center and then two approximately equally large side pieces and um you know you, you can work towards being centered make make one bigger smaller totally up to you guys and what your look you want is and so you are can now start attaching all of your other attachments and you got one of those pods out and go for right at the top yeah so you know this pod at this point is like a little stiff for the organicness of the piece so i'm going to go back in there and kind of heat it up and 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 melt it around a little bit so that it has more fluidity to it uh, otherwise i don't think it fits the piece so much right and be mind being mindful of the way all the different components fit together and, and yeah. flow together 
And now you're going to go in with the mini torch, of course, and work in that, that base where you used it as a, the bridge point, essentially. Another attachment to make it nice and steady. Exactly the same thing. We're just attaching it in a couple places. It's, it's not necessary. Um, it does decrease the chance of it breaking off, though. Right. You know, less likely it'll bump against something. Yeah. A little torque on it. And, uh oh because i mean the glass has some some amount of bend and bounce in it already and and especially on these thin pieces they can really bend um you know a, a little bit before it breaks but if it's attached in two points it decreases that chance of it mm -hmm. so two. positioning yep positioning your second one there you're gonna go in for the back side there and uh you want to be you know looking at the balance of the piece and kind of thinking about what you have left also so you got your leaves mm -hmm. your little cup and you do have a third one of these too uh, yeah, yeah. Well, we'll see. We'll see what I can fit in there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, the cool kind of cool thing is, especially if you're not building around a central vessel, you can just really build this as big as you want and add add different components. Doing the same deal there, just heating up the bottom, bending it in towards the piece there, kind of letting it flow, and then you're going to bridge up the bottom since that one didn't quite reach. Some three mil rod, just reach in there, touch you, it kind of heated both sides both the pod and the stem and then the rod is hot in between and you stuck to both at the same time you know making sure to get just a just a little bit of glass in there yeah it, as long as you get it to touch and it's not super thin in between it, when you heat it up it all becomes even so it'll it'll form a nice shape and all kind of come together um that'll happen naturally and and that'll be kind of a cue for you guys when you're attaching these things when it starts to form an even shape you you can kind of guess that it's almost all melted in at that point so you decided the third pod was a little much for this guy didn't really fit on the stem so you're going to go ahead and go with some of these leaves yeah i like this color that blue color or exotic red or whatever we used super cool yeah. and of course this is long out of production is it to this i think i i assume maybe I, it's still in production i guess we should check i don't know if you guys know let us know if if they're still making the red blue and green exotics but i don't know if they did take them off or not so you just uh cleaned up the connection point and stuck it on there and once again bridging it up to the stem just gonna reach in there with my mini torch and and you can see that i have really don't have a lot of room to reach this so i gotta kind of get creative and and move the piece and the torch in ways that I can fit that little head in between sections of the piece to make sure that the flame hits it in the right place. I mean, you always want to be mindful of what's kind of backstopping your flame, what you're hitting when you're shooting past the exactly. bridge. You know, you don't want to be shooting right at the side of one of those pods. That that could be dangerous in the cracking department. No, that's a super important um, comment, Kevin. That you got to with this, you got to really look to see what the the splash of your flame is doing beyond what you want it to do and making sure you heat up really exactly and precisely because as you guys are, know or are learning if you heat up a piece of glass a, with a torch and then leave it out of the out of the flame it's going to crack right and the same thing would be true if i just splash the side of the piece with the flame something cold you know get it unintentionally. hot all of a sudden yeah, Whew. yeah. no good <clears throat> so you're just working your way around the top attaching these leaves on one at a time pull the punty off bend her down bridge her up yeah and and if you guys are building this you f feel free to put this in the kiln every once in a while for 10 15 minutes let it all equalize um, i'm kind of going through it and running through it in the demo but I'm, I'm actually working on a piece right now you can check it out on my instagram um but it's, it's used the same concept but i built a cage around a pipe and i i put in the kiln every three flowers or three components just to make sure that it's not going to crack on me right the uh for something when we're filming the videos we're always trying to push the out of the kiln time maybe a little bit longer than we yeah. should sometimes just since it's all uh, we you know, we just sit around and, and yeah. talk to each other and look at instagram for a minute while we let it warm up yeah especially on the more complicated pieces just have to put in that kiln exactly it's towards the end you're like all right yeah kiln break all right look at we're starting to build this up I think it needs a little bit more though, Kevin. These leaves are cool, adds a lot to it. I think it fills out the shape a little bit, but I feel like there's still some more empty space. Totally down low. You got yeah. some room left here. Well, thankfully, got some more things to put on. What do you think? What do you think we should put on? Are you gonna do the? I actually don't know. Cup next. Let's see. All I right. think maybe we're gonna put this in the kiln. No, no, I'm just <laughs> going for it. Oh no, I know why. There was a crack because we didn't put it in the kiln. Yeah, exactly. So I'm just going in, fixing a crack and 
it's on the pod so this is this is not the best place for it to crack um a, a, a easier place would be the maria's the, mm-hmm. those ones are easier to fix so i gotta gotta be careful i can't blow into this piece at all and i just gotta like heal that crack up but i got i got through it so now that's good to go in the kiln let that warm up for 15 minutes or so and now you're going to use the bunsen since uh, we had some cracking problems yeah exactly so so i had it in the kiln for about 10 minutes and now i'm taking it out of the kiln and putting it in the bunsen to even bring up that temperature more before i start to add components to it again so maybe i brought up a few more hundred degrees where it's still stiff but it's not going to be as reactive and to gonna, the shock i'm going to keep that warm in the bunsen there for a second while you uh, punty up to the front of this guy since you need to switch your side to make the attachment yep yep so i just attach the big punny and then i used one of those three mil punnies um that i was i was filling in the gaps with for for a punny to attach to this dish and since uh, you're just going to attach it immediately, you're not even going to worry about making that punty on center. Yeah, exactly. It's just like straight to the thing. Boom, heating up the bottom, heating up the end of one of those little Maria stems and get a nice, uh, nice good seal on there. And then once that seals on there, because the seal is so small on the, um, the clear, you just give it a little bit of torque, it pops right off. Exactly. It's even though it was pretty hot seal on the seal scale, yeah. you know, maybe it was a seven. It's so small. You can just break it off and exactly. clean up the little bleb. Exactly. A little bridge on there. And of course, cleaning up both the bridge and the attachment with the mini torch. And then it's back into the Bunsen. And now that we have the Bunsen on, we can kind of keep it out of the kiln for a long time. Exactly. Using the Bunsen like an on bench kiln almost. Here's your flowers, sir. No, there you are. I hope you enjoy your serving. And those are some sweet flowers you had uh, made up already, and you had them in a little nice tray you just had in the kiln. Yes, and definitely want to give a shout out to my friends in Italy who made the flowers uh, when they were visiting my studio. Um, these were made by the Ballerine Brothers. So sick. Yeah. Check out their Instagrams. I'll link those down below. They are yeah. doing some awesome work. So cool. So, so cool to see their progression. They came to visit me a few years ago, and made these flowers for something to me to stick on later and i just felt like the organic feel of this piece would be a good to add these flower components on very fitting since they make a lot of goblets also oh they do that's true you know i would say probably their mainstay yeah it it definitely is and they're moving into pipes which is really cool that was so cool was watching them make some pipes you know i'm sure they made some before but you know making some awesome headies was very cool yeah um they've been they've been progressing they've visited with other glass blowers and their works it's cool man it's cool to see so just working on these flowers here one at a time sealing them on mini torching and then back in the bunsen and you can even mini torch in the bunsen if you you know really had to yep. work something for a while totally see there you go and these are hemostats that i'm picking up the flowers with with the bent um like forceps end or whatever i don't know it's nice uh, good way to get um a good angle on it rather than having yeah. to have your arm all the way out to the side the bent tip makes yeah. them nice and easy to attach just so, attaching a few more here kind of filling in the, the empty space yeah and i have more flowers out than i'm probably going to use but um like we were talking about earlier it's just it's really good to have extra components right might as well put them all in there you can have your choice of colors yep a little mushroom this is pretty good this little mushroom though is uh, just, just trying to get away we, we got to get give a oh. shot. Oh! oh, no. It's escaped. Just, oh, oh, no. It was just like flick of the wrist and ooh. Man. Down. No. <laughs> you look so sad, too. Thankfully, I was able to find it there. Yeah. It, 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 we saw where it went, so I uh, got those hemostats and then puntied up to it for you. All right. Well, we got to give a shout out to the guy who made that mushroom, too. Who made the mushroom? Los One Glass. Los One Glass. Yep. Thanks, Carlos. Uh, that was from a collab that we had that broke. But, Aww. well, he knows. I mean, it was a long time ago. Yeah, and yeah. It was one of the components of it. And um, Carlos yeah, is just, killing it. Yeah, making those trees and trigs. And he was a host on the video in the 60s. So if you want to see Carlos's work, he's maybe not video 60 through 65 or something like that. Absolutely. You guys did some cool projects in there. Yeah. Using your mini torch as a little uh, adjuster there. And now that goes back in the Bunsen for a minute, and then uh, it can go in the kiln. All right, just checking it out to make sure it's on center. It looks good. Let's put it in the kiln. So that was about an hour and 20 minutes for all that sculpting and assembly. And uh, now you're going to move on to making the foot and the cup for your goblet. I love this color. It reminds me of um, 
like a kitchen that's super outdated from the 50s. <laughs> like the countertops yes. are like this crazy pea green color. You walk into some crazy master bathroom with yeah. like the tub is this color uh-huh. and, the, and the toilet and you're like, whoa, all right. Yeah, Choice, yeah. Choices were made. No, seriously, dude, I was making this piece. Um, Maria, the cuddle assassin, drew some flowers and then I backed it with the antidote, which is a similar color and I, oh. it was a cut and flip, so I opened it up and I was like, damn, this looks like a shower curtain from the 50s. It's awesome. <laughs> that is pretty sweet. Yeah. Oh. I don't know. I, there's something about like about that color and that aesthetic but like not in too much right like you you can't get get too much of that but like a little bit's kind of cool totally totally throw it in there switch it up so you just got a blow tube attached to the end there and you're gonna cut off a section that you can use to make a big bubble that you'll make a foot out of yeah and um there's we've made a few feet in these videos different ways and um so you're welcome to reference any of the other goblet videos where we made feet but basically making a little bubble, blowing it out, and then going to spin it out. Very, uh, pretty classic on the, like, uh, soft glass side of yeah. things. And the, the same style of technique, generally. You know, make a bubble, yep. cut it off, flare it out. This glass is particularly, like, chewy or something. Like, hmm. sti- stiff, sticky. Mm. But it's not, like, stiff in the same way that I would normally describe a stiffer color. It's, like, almost, like, gummy. Interesting. Yeah. It like takes a bit to get going, and then it will go. Yeah, right? it will mm. go, but it it's like a sticky. I don't know how to describe it, but it's interesting. It, does, it that's why it's it, the the foot didn't like really pop and flare open the way. Right, it, it was kind does. of a it's kind of slowly yeah. flared rather yeah. than a lot of times it would be like woof. Yeah, pop right like an umbrella. Mm-hmm. So you're getting a nice big bubble here, a little bit on the squat side, but pretty spherical. Yeah, yeah, definitely. The squatter you make it the flatter the whole foot can be. If you make it really domed, you'll still have that dome mm-hmm. in the end. So letting, it d- depends on the look that you want. Right, letting gravity squat it back there a little bit. And now you're gonna put on your avolio for the foot. So I think I'm gonna use that same serendipity color um, just so it matches and it's continual. If, if you use clear or something else like that, you'll see a break in the design and Maybe your eye will get stuck there. Right. And of course, this is also an opportunity for a little accent color. If you had something else you wanted to use tied into some other part of the piece. Yeah, exactly. Just condensed a little glass on there, flame cut off, and just uh, heating it up, condensing it back so you have a nice, even gather. Yeah, and then once you have that on there, you're, you're able to attach a punny, and then that's your connection point to spin out your foot. Um, when you're spinning out feet, it's, it's good to have a longer punny, even a weighted punny. Um, which would be if I use this seven millimeter rod and then attached a short section of 10 on the end, just so it, it had more rotational force when it was spinning. Totally on the far end of on behind far, your hand. Behind, exactly. There's some physics behind that, I'm sure. Totally. Until yeah. it gets the rotational mass going. And yeah. So you're going in here for a flame cut on that far side of that bubble, heating it up, pulling nice and thin, and you want to try and get as round an opening as possible here. All right, so now that that's nice and open, I just need to clean it up a little bit and make sure that it's it's gonna be even, as even as I possibly can make it before I spin it out. Right, it's much easier to have an even bubble into an even foot. It's very hard to correct it once you spin it out. If not impossible. Right, you could try for hours and it's probably better to just make another that's one. That's like a good test for a master glass boy. Like see if they can take a super funky foot <laughs> and make it a super clean foot. <laughs> So you're just going in, condensing the lip a little bit there, paddling it there, nice and flat. A little uh, persuasion with the jacks as well. Yeah, and I'm just getting the heat right up in there, and then that lip is getting hotter and hotter. I'm gonna go onto my Marver and just really try to make this as even as possible. But you can even see it's it's not perfectly uh, round anymore. It's a little bit oblong, and that's why it was bouncing a little bit like that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Especially easy to see from the perspective we have from the side here. Yeah starting the flare with your jacks to start to to move it in the direction you're going to want it to go now it's time for the flare oh one more little cleanup on the side get that heat in there exactly pulled your torch out so you can have a little bit more room to work out here i like flaring but this is particularly sticky this one Mm -hmm. but didn't didn't want to move it doesn't want to move the the way i want so so i'm going to apply a bunch of heat see what i can do 
It's almost like the heat is transferring slower through the color too. Yeah, nice. So there you go, spinning real fast, two hands. And you can see it, it did flare out there. Yeah, it did, but it's like, it, it, I, I, can, I know I can do better and mm -hmm. cleaner mm -hmm. with different colors um, or practice more with this color. But you know, it, I feel like, like feet are an important part of the goblet and it does take some skill and practice and, and the different colors create a different environment you know that you, different reactions that you need to do to get it straight right different uh, different way the color is going to move when you heat it up different way it's going to move as it's cooling down yeah so you're going to bench cool that just uh, stick it over on the front of your bench and it's thin enough it doesn't need to be in the kiln to cool down exactly yeah that's just on a bench i mean uh, maybe not forever but for a few hours a few days or something like that it's fine Right, it's just going right back on the piece and then into the kiln to anneal later on. Yeah, and if, if you didn't do that, it's possible to crack it. Now you grab that uh, other color here and we're going to make a, uh, a cup for the goblet. Yeah, so now we have that green, electric green or whatever this is. I got my Delta Mag flame on. Oh yeah, Rage, and this is some also some thick tubing. So. Yeah, it's heating up the whole thing and then just trying to make a really even bubble, big bubble, big even bubble. Right, and you know you're you're condensing it back some here, and then you're gonna blow it out to get it into a real spherical shape, and then shape the the cup from there. So heating it up, blowing, and then you can see I'm starting to really get that shape. Put some more air in there. This holds the heat really nicely, so I can make these longer movements. Right, you can see how much easier this color is moving mm -hmm. than the previous one. Exactly. There you go. All that that was all made off that one heat. That right one, that that blow is basically the shape that i needed to get it to got that good soaking heat in there and uh now you have that nice big bubble pop on an albolio and you're ready to do the flame cut and start shaping it yep if any of you guys speak um italian or venetian you can let us know what avolio means it's a venetian word i believe it means to connect or connection but let us know going in with your lynx flame there just melting that back I want to make sure it's nice and even since this is where you have your punty. Of course, everything on center. Yep, just making sure that it's nice and centered. And then I'm going to attach a punty. Again, it's a little bit of a long punty, but sometimes when making goblets, it's it's good to have a little bit longer of a punty. And you got your blow hose attached to the other side so you can blow as you do the flame cut. All right, nice uh, seal. That's a 10 on the seal scale. Hottest of hot seals hot, right there. Hot, permanent connection. So now just going in with your flame cut. Nice precise Lynx flame there. Yeah, a little bit more oxygen so it pushes it. It's a little bit hotter. And then I'm going to pull and blow a little bit. And it's starting to spin faster. And then blowing. And then you can see it start to rip just off like that. And that was a nice, nice even one there. Good even lip there. Probably just only a tiny bit of cleanup. And then you'll start to flare it out a little bit into the shape you want your cup to be yeah and you were saying that this is a shape of a cup that you like too for like um like just this by itself you mm, know? Mm -hmm. the kind of orb beer glass shape yeah. is pretty in on instagram right now there's a couple yeah. people making those and some of them are big like 16 ounce orbs things oh, wow. like that it seems hard to drink out of <laughs> I, I bet yeah right <laughs> maybe we should make one for a 40 oh yeah there we go <laughs> <laughs> two hands cup yeah, uh -huh. uh, so you got your jacks here getting some more wax on them so they slide real nicely over the surface of the glass yeah just heating up evenly got my jacks there's wax on the jacks and that's what's burning off right there and opening up a little bit at a time always got that nice beeswax smell in the studio too. yeah if you guys have your own studio and burn the beeswax i i love that smell it's like oh, glass studio smell right i'm like oh jack's in use yeah. jack's in use and you can see there you're going to a nice pretty straight wall for yeah. this cup on this one we're going for a straight wall it's heating it up making it sure it's nice and even getting that heat into the lip and now going in for a few final movements here to even out that shape you're rotating relatively quickly when you're in the flame since it's pretty thin and in that pretty powerful mirage flame it could yep. really start to deform it if you go too slow yep exactly almost done i'm gonna go on the outside a little bit to even that out just like anything in glass you know moving it out bringing it back moving it out bringing it back getting it to exactly where you want it making sure the lip stays nice and even all right well that's uh, about the shape that i want so let me set that down 
So I gotta compare this and see if, well not compare, but like see if it fits together. So I usually take like a visual of the piece not connected just to make sure that the components are the right size. If there's any other shaping I need to do. You know, how is it gonna look together? Mm -hmm. Which way, which side, which, you know, which yeah. angles are gonna attach at. Better to decide before you have it hot. And yeah. like, oh, oh gosh, which way I'm gonna attach this? Right, it's, it's just knowing what you're gonna do ahead of time. That's what will help you become a fluid glass blower. Mm -hmm. So you decided your foot here, you're going to add a little bit of flare to. And the flare is in part because it's not as even as I wanted, right? I wanted, if, if I wanted to, was aiming for a perfectly flat foot, well, this is a, a technique that you can do that will, in some cases, make your piece, um, you know, more exciting for the viewer and also hide any unevenness that you may think is in your piece right if you're going to keep a, an, a regular just flared foot you might make another one probably try and go for a flatter one where is this yeah here? yeah yeah like yeah. all right you know let's flare let's flare it up a little bit you know yeah but with the organicness of this piece i thought it would fit really well worked great i yeah. figured just using my bull push here to make these little ridges and, you know always look at your tools and think about What's another way I could use this, right? Yeah. What other techniques or, you know, shapes could I make in the glass with this? Pretty fun. Just given it's that cool. an overall heat now. Look at that flame coming out, it it. out I know. It's pretty awesome. I like that. It's like shooting out of the little sides. Pretty it's cool. A little flying spaghetti monster. Yeah. <laughs> Heating it up there and you just press that on your marver to make sure it sits flat. Yeah. You know, it's obviously going to sit on those, those high points and making sure that there's enough of them touching the ground that it'll, it'll be a nice even shape for the foot right no wobbles for your wine mm -mm, mm -mm. so now you have your grabber tool here and that'll hold your your cup while you attach it to the stem yeah that's an italian tool my friend uh, roberto donna made so it just kind of pulls down on the cup and then you have a little set screw holds yep. it tight and it's it's a really solid hold it has some grooves cut in the platform there to keep the cup from moving it's very nice yeah and i think also for like keep like seeing where the center is of mm, the cup mm -hmm, and, mm -hmm. and there's, a, there's a spring in there so you pull it back right. it's kind of spring loaded great tool yeah so you pulled off your punty there a little bit away from the alvolio so you could work your way in with the heat pull off all the clear so there's just color and now you can grab the foot as well and this is a different kind of tool um also made in italy by the same gentleman this is more a typical typical tool that you would see in the United States, though the shape and size and style. Mm -hmm. Just a bigger version of your standard claw grabbers, exactly, pretty much. and a little bit more secure set screw, a little bit beefier overall. Yeah, and one thing about these, which is it's great, both of these tools, you can put them in a lathe, right? I can chuck up to that really long handle, put that in the lathe, and make a much more complicated goblets. Um, keeping things mm -hmm. out and, and with the Bunsen burner, et cetera, et cetera. Totally. And so you were looking there to see which, you, which felt more solid. And you decided the foot is more solid in yeah. its holder. So you'll attach the stem to the cup yeah. and then take that holder, you know, attached to the foot and you finish it in the foot holder. And they were both really solid, but the foot was particularly solid with those ridges. So you're just doing a nice hot seal there, making sure it's nice and centered. Coming out of the flame there, a little bit of a pull. And then you aren't going to work the seal in yet. You're going to attach the other one and then mini torch them both. Uh, yeah, mini torch them to kind of... I worked the seal in quite a bit with it. So it's fully sealed. But I'm going to go back in with a little straightening mm -hmm. uh, after this. A little adjustment, yeah. right? You're not worrying about straightening the stem yet. Not perfectly, no. I mean, as long as I get it pretty close right. at this right. point, yeah. So you grab your foot here. Boom. Let me know if you guys think that this goblet belongs underwater or like in the jungle it's i, I think it fits either place I, I i'm a little partial to underwater personally. underwater yeah yeah i like it right. let me know let me know where you guys think this goblet can be used in the comments so now you just sealed the foot on same deal nice hot seal making sure it's as straight as possible and now since your foot and your cup are cold you can safely uh, just take it off your holders there making sure not to touch the stem Yep, and I got to make sure to take it off carefully, and it's still hot, so um, now I'm going to adjust it a little bit, heat it up, and then I'll be able to hold that and straighten it on the marmer. Right, you want to make sure it's, you know, nice and straight the whole way up from all angles, and you're going to go in with your mini torch and make another little adjustment there, heat just where you want it. 
Uh, yeah, both heat, both adjusting a little bit and also removing any scuzz in the video. Right. And there may be a little scuzz from that movement when you uh -huh. moved it there. Yep. So this is the way that we would remove that scuzz mark. And then uh, you're going to do the same thing up at the top. Adjust the, the cup just a hair yep. once you get the, the uh, bottom of the stem where you want it. Yeah, and this is like some great practice for mini torching stuff too, like attaching all these components and straightening the cups and removing any of the vitrification. Just a little bit of heat up top here, a little bit of scuzz perhaps, and boom, I think that's a goblet. Let's get it in the kiln. Yeah, we didn't have much time for a nice glam shot here. Gotta get uh, this guy in the kiln, a little uh, dangerous uh, game. Uh, boom. All right, cool. You can see all the, the colors there that really struck out on the serendipity. And yeah. then you also have the little pods and the, it just flows so nice. Uh, yeah, I really I like all the components in the center and how they're kind of packed in there. Um, yeah, it was a lot of fun to make. Thank you guys for watching. It's for one of you guys. Make sure you comment on the video and we'll send it right out to you. Yeah, leave us some questions. We'd love to answer them on the next one. Welcome back, you guys. Thanks for joining us to make that goblet. I had a lot of fun with it. I hope you learned something, a trick, a tip, yeah, anything you can bring into your own work. So thanks for joining us for that. Totally. Can't wait to see the goblets you guys make online. Definitely a hashtag Revere Glass School when you make them. Yeah. Put them in the Facebook group on the torch. Kevin and I love to see that. Totally. Guess what, Dustin? What's up? I got some questions. Really? Sure do. All right. First one here from Tree Hoss. Uh -huh. Do you need a kiln to start glass blowing? Only looking to make small marbles, pendants, and you know, might want to tr eventually try some pipes, but is a kiln essential? Short answer, yes. Um, there's ways to get around it. Uh, it's, and it's in the way, the short answer is yes, the ways to get around it are even more difficult for a beginner. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and so that's kind of what people run into. So uh, in all reality, you're not gonna really anneal anything fully uh, when you first start out blowing glass, just using the torch. So there's a lot of cheap options for kilns. I mean, I made my first kilns. Um, you can just buy some stuff and and make your own. So I would really recommend buying a kiln. I know mm -hmm. it's a it's a big purchase, but you can totally. get one for a couple hundred bucks. So totally. and you know, look for used ones, something like that. Maybe somebody's upgrading to a bigger kiln. Yeah. You know, got their little one for sale. It's true. Even like Craigslist, there's people giving away kilns all the time. If you remove the kiln, you get to keep it. And granted, that kiln's probably gonna be larger than you want, but you can take it apart and yep. build a smaller one. There you go, yeah. pretty sweet. All right, next up here from Troy Richards, is a two-stage torch better to get than a single-stage Lynx just to get started? Yes, yeah. If you can afford a two-stage torch, absolutely get a two-stage torch because it, you're not gonna grow out of it as soon you know mm -hmm. you, you, you could buy a mirage or a phantom and you would never grow out of it you could do your entire body of work for your life on a torch like that totally whereas a lynx i'd say there's a, a pretty good chance at some point you're going to want a bigger torch you know it might not be right yeah. away but mm -hmm. when you start to work on bigger hollow stuff or bigger solid work you can be like ah oh. you know you might be able to do it with a lynx but you're going to be like oh my gosh this yeah. is taking so long i wish i had a little more heat and like um yeah like there's a guy in my class my online class and he's got a lynx and doing some flares He's got to keep it really small, got to really focus on that even heat. It's good practice. It's like learning how to play an instrument on an instrument that's a little bit beyond reach of where you want to go, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. or something like that. Totally. Yeah. Very nice. Third one here from Gary Vacation. What's causing scuzz on pieces and how do you solve the problem? Uh, the most common reason for scuzz is devitrification, um, moving the glass when the outer layer is um, colder than the inner layer and that creates some scuzz and like on the bend of a Sherlock that's what I'm thinking of is it, it often occurs here on this bend and then I bend it and then there's some scuzz on there and I'll take a an oxygenating flame from my mini torch and just you know gloss that over and burn that off that's um that's the most common way and the common solution uh, it can occur when the glasses has been really worked for a long time. Mm -hmm. um, it, it can occur from some off-gassing of different ga glasses. So um, I, my guess is that you're you're asking about devitrification, though. Totally. Very nice. Got to give this slide away here from last week. Let's do it. Let's give this slide away. That was fun making that. I love that and the little uh, glow. I, I saw quite a few people like that in the comments. That was fun yeah. little fun little touch there with the UV. Yeah, yeah. I, I like that Illuminati. 
Well, this one is going to the king of Jamaican disco. I hope you enjoy. <laughs> Thank you. I hope you enjoy it. It was fun making it. Uh, hit up Kevin on Instagram and uh, we'll ship it out. Absolutely. Thanks again for watching, yeah. guys. Uh, we'll be back in a couple weeks with another one. See you guys in a couple weeks.